Hello, I'm Kirk Weiler, and today we're going to be looking at the Desmos Investigation Number 2 video. In this video, which is going to be very, very short, I'm going to give a little bit of instruction on how to graph piecewise functions on Desmos and how to add sliders to piecewise functions on Desmos in order to adjust parameters that an equation might have to try to make it continuous and maybe differentiable. So this is all tied into the Desmos investigation number two that I do in my Math for Honors class, but even those of you that are watching this to just learn a little bit more about this great online graphing calculator, hey, join along. You won't need to know any of the content that's going on in the class. So let's jump right into it. Now, I put out a Desmos video um, probably about a month ago, and I talked about graphing piecewise functions. And at the time, I put each uh, portion of the piecewise function in its own equation. But today, we're going to learn how to combine them all into one equation. It's going to look a little bit complicated, but once you get used to how to do it, it's not that bad. So, let me open up my favorite program, Desmos. Well, that wasn't a very loud snap, but it did open the program anyway. Now remember, you can get to Desmos in any web browser whatsoever by going to www.desmos.com. Right now, I'm simply in the Safari web browser, but they all work well. All right? So I'm going to launch my calculator, and I'm not going to even log in with my own account because I can do this all just simply from the generic login. Not even the login, just opening up the page. So let's learn how to put in a piecewise function. All right in one equation. So in line one, I'm going to click up here, and I'm going to type in f, <clears throat> parentheses, x, parentheses, equals, and now, now comes the weird part. I'm going to actually put in that little curly bracket, that bracket that's right up here. Um, and we put it in, and now what's a little bit weird is that we have to put that interval for the x values first. So I'm going to put in negative 5, then I go to my Desmos keyboard and I get the less than or equal to symbol, x less than zero. Now, how do I tell it what the equation is? Well, here's the weird part. I put a colon. So I put colon, and now I'm going to put in negative square root, going back to my Desmos keyboard, 25 minus x squared. All right, and now I kind of come out of that a little bit, and that's the first part. Um, and if you look really closely, you can already see that it's graphing that uh, semicircle with a radius of 5, but only from negative 5 to 0. All right. Now, how do I put in the other part? Well, now I separate the next portion with a comma. So I just put comma, and now I have to put the interval back in again. So I'm going to put in 0, less than or equal to x, less than 7. All right. Remember now that I've got the interval in, I'm going to put a colon in. I'm going to type in the formula, 7 minus x. Now, if I had a third, fourth formula, etc., I would put more commas in, more intervals, colon, formula, common, comma, etc. But here, that's it. So I'm just going to end the curly bracket, and I'm going to hit enter. And what I get, right, is I get this very, very nice um, piecewise function. I can kind of zoom in, zoom out to try to get a good window for it. But ultimately, I get this piecewise function that is part semicircle, um, part linear. Now, one thing that I've talked to my students about is that Desmos is not very good at putting sort of closed circles versus open circles, and that's because it's a really good program. And open circles, or holes, or whatever you want to call them, you can't actually see them. But maybe I'd like to put those in here anyway. So let me review how to plot a point with you, all right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to plot the point negative 5, 0. So even though it really doesn't need to be plotted, I'm going to plot the left end point. So you just plot it like you plot any other point. In line 2, I'm going to put in parentheses, negative 5, comma, 0, parentheses. And I hit enter. And great. And that's a solid point because that point is in the domain of the function. You know, but that semicircle shouldn't apply at x equals 0. Still, I'm going to put in the point 0 comma, negative 5. Now, that point gets plotted, but I really want it to be an open circle. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up to this little, you know, settings icon. We all know the settings icon, and I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to actually change the first point so that it's the same color as the curve, which is red. So I'm going to change that point to red. But then when I click on the uh, second point, I'm going to also change that to red. But notice how we have this, uh, this second point option over here. That's your open circle. So I'm going to click on that, 
and look what I have. I now have a nice open circle there. So if I want to if I want to finish this problem, I'm going to also plot the point at um, 0, 7, but I'm going to leave that one filled in. And I'm going to plot the point at 7, 0. All right. And I'm going to go change that one to be an open circle. And while at the same time, I'll change the color of the all the points so that they're the same color as the curve. It's just the way I am. I just like to see it that way. And there we have it. We've got a beautiful piecewise function graph that looks just gorgeous, right? And it's got the open circles where it should have the open circles. It's got the closed circles where it should have closed circles. Again, the closed ones aren't as important as the open ones because those really show where the function doesn't apply, and that's kind of important. So that's it for graphing a piecewise function on Desmos. We're going to do another one in a moment, but I'm going to get rid of the program for a sec. All right. Let's talk about graphing with sliders. Now in the last video I talked about what a slider was. And a slider is essentially when you put an equation in that you want to have graphed, and then what happens is you leave some of the parameters as unknowns. So for instance, in this piecewise function, we've got a portion of it, when x is less than 2, that's simply a concave down parabola, 9 minus x squared. But the portion that's greater than or equal to 2 is a linear function where I haven't said what the slope is, the m, and I haven't said what the b is, the y-intercept. So I'm leaving those as is. So let's, let's again put in a piecewise function. That's, that's pretty complicated, but let's do it. Let me put in f, parentheses, x, parentheses, equals, all right? And I'm going to put that funny bracket, all right? Now I have to put the interval in first, so I'm going to put in x less than 2. Then I'm going to put in colon. All right. Then I'm going to type in the formula. 9 minus x squared. All right. So that's the first formula. Now remember, I separate the formulas and intervals by commas, so I'm going to put a comma there. And now the next interval, x is, go to the Desmos keyboard, greater than or equal to 2, colon, and x plus b. Now notice, before I even put in the final curly bracket, it's already asking me if I want to add sliders for m and b. I can do that now, or I can put in the final curly bracket, which I'm going to do, and now I'm going to hit all. All right, and now I have sliders for m and b. Now notice the default settings um, for m and b, as it is always for any parameter you put in, are default settings of 1. So right now we're really graphing um, the line y equals 1x plus 1, so a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 1. But we can really kind of kind of play around with it. You know, we, we can do all sorts of things. Again, we may want to resize the window a little bit to try to get it to look as good as it can look. All right. Um, but of course that depends on m and b. Um, but now I, I, I can play around with m. I can play around with b. So for instance, if I just kind of, you know, futz around with m here, you know, making it bigger or smaller, you can tell that the line is rotating, right? Um, it's kind of weird because it also looks like it might be shifting up and down. The key is it's actually rotating around a y-intercept of 1, and that can be kind of hard to see um, on the Desmos unless I had the line extended all the way. And of course, I can also futz around with b. I can, I can make b larger, I can make b smaller, um, and of course that does just vertically shift that line. Okay. Now, one of the things that we've been concentrating on lately in class is um, values of parameters that will make a curve both continuous and differentiable at uh, the cutoff point. So remember, if you wanted to figure out some kind of continuity condition, or what I call in my class a no-step condition, then what you have to do is you have to set the two equations equal, specifically at x equals 2. And what happens is that gives us this equation 2m plus b equals 5. Keep in mind that what that means is it means for any values of m and b that make that true, then, um, then we're going to have continuity. So for instance, to me it's really easy to pick a value of m and then figure out the value of b. For instance, let's say um, I, I set m equal 2, so let me slide the slider over to 2. Well then 2 times 2 would be 4, so if I subtracted that from both sides, b would have to be equal to 1. And look, we've got continuity. Now my students will look at that and go, yeah, but you got a corner, and that's okay. But we have continuity. We have the two graphs meeting up. 
Um, I could do all sorts of m's and b's. For instance, oh, let's let, let me do an easy one. Let me make m equal to zero. I go into that. Gives me a nice horizontal line. Notice I don't have continuity anymore. But if m is zero, then b would have to be five. So if I just adjust that, then b is equal to five, and I have this nice parabola transitioning to a horizontal line. All right. I even figured out the m and b combination that'll make um, this graph not just continuous, but also differentiable. Um, and that happens to be when m is negative 4. Now, if m is negative 4, b is going to have to be 13. Uh-oh. Um, and my slider isn't big enough. In other words, my slider right now for b just goes between negative 10 and 10. All I have to do is click this upper limit, or maybe double-click on it. Now it allows me to change that, change that upper limit. I think I'm going to make it into a 15. I need it to be at least 13. I change it into a 15, exit back out. Now I can slide that up to 13 and take a look at that. You know, we now have a uh, nice um, continuous and smooth curve. Now, um, while students are working through the um, activities that go with this particular video, um, they're going to have to come up with some ugly numbers too. So let's say that for some reason, eh, Let's just say for some reason, um, we knew that m was equal to the square root of 3. Well, that's not so easy to slide. Um, but what you can do is actually just double click on that m value and type in square root of 3. You're going to have to use the Desmos keyboard for that. Now I hit enter. By the way, notice that the slider disappeared for m because now I'm just setting m equal to something. Okay. And now, let's see, what would b have to be? Well, if, if m is root 3, then b would have to be 5 minus 2 times the square root of b. I can enter that as well. So if I double-click on b, I can put in 5 minus 2 times the square root of 3. And now I hit Enter, and I have a continuous curve again. right? So you can make um, parameters uh, very messy if you want to. Um, by just simply hand entering their values. Um, it does get rid of the sliders, which is a little bit unfortunate if you want to continue to play around with it, but I can easily get the sliders back by just Xing out the M, Xing out the B, only leaving me with that original line, and now it asks me if I want sliders again. And I hit yes, and then I can continue to play with them. All right. Now, notice on this problem, I didn't put any open circles or closed circles or anything like that, because honestly, I didn't need any of them. You know, mostly I'm going to be working with this to try to get the two functions to be continuous at that cutoff point, so eventually I don't want any open circles. Um, but I, I just didn't really need to. Uh, I wanted to show that in the last problem, because when I made the first video for this, I didn't even think it was possible to be to put the, uh, the holes on the graph. All right. Well, that's it. Let me get rid of Desmos for good this time, finally. All right, and let's wrap it up. So today's video was very, very simple. We just looked at how to enter a piecewise function. That's a little bit complicated with the squiggly brackets and things like that. You may have to like watch that and watch it again a couple times. Um, you know, and then we looked at how to enter points, how to put sliders back into the presentation, and how to adjust those sliders to kind of get things that we want. Um, and that's really all you'll need in terms of Desmos to do the next Desmos activity. All right, for now, thank you for joining me for a very, very short video. Um, this has been another video from Arlington High School Math. My name is Mr. Weiler, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.